Hi everyone, welcome to Mompreneur Space live show podcast and I'm your host Kenneth Chu. We interview mompreneurs from all around the world uh, where they share their inspiring stories and how they overcome their challenges and struggles. So I'm your host Kenneth Chu and today's guest is none other than Olga Kofton who is the owner of Olga Kofton LLC and volunteer for Elantra TV. And today we will be talking about discover the super mom in you where she will share her secret on how she overcome her mompreneurship journey, uh, struggles and challenges. So please, without further ado, let us welcome Olga. Hi, Olga. And thanks for making the time. Uh, so before we start, there's a tradition uh, that every guest gets to post a question out to the next guest, uh, which is the question of the day. So are you ready to receive the question of the day posted by the previous guest before we can officially kick start the show? So the question of the day posted by the previous guest is if you are a mom and resources are not a problem how do you want to impact the world positively okay i repeat again if you are a mom and resources are not a problem how do you want to impact the world positively so spend some time to think about it while i go on to facebook live to see if your life successfully and our audio are good to go all right Okay, I got, got you. So, uh, Olga, are you ready uh, with your answer to the question of the day? Yes, I am ready. Okay, share it you with us. You want to repeat that for someone who okay. maybe didn't hear so it? Okay, so I will repeat uh, the question of the day, which is, if you are a mom and resources are not a problem, how do you want to impact the world positively? Yes, thank you so much. So, the good news that we are all have resources we have the re the most important resource we have is time and attention so we all have it so we all can impact the world in a positive way it is nice to have financial resources always but it is not necessary to make the change or make this world a better place so for me i like to use my resources whether it is financial or time and attention and i like to volunteer my time for the project creative society and make an impact on the world because me as a mom i understand that the type of world we live in right now does not provide the best future for my kids because we still see hunger, we still still hate, we see wars, we see injustice, we see it all around us. We pretend like it's not there, but we all know deep down inside that we deserve to live in a better society. So I choose to use my resources to volunteer for the Global Project Creative Society. Wow, I, I think this question of the day really suits you a lot and it just happened that you are on this uh, huge project which I'm, I'm very blessed to be a part of it uh, where you guys, uh, I was one of your guests onto uh, Creative Society on one of the episodes and really thank you for your awesome, awesome answer and I believe that uh, whatever that you are making is already uh, making a huge impact to the society, to the world. So now we can officially kick start with the show and um, so to maybe to start off with uh, uh, Olga, can you do a short introduction of yourself? Where are you from? Uh, why are you doing what you are doing? And uh, currently, what are you busy with? So um, share, it with, share it with us. Yes, definitely. So my name is Olga and I live just outside of Detroit in Michigan, USA. And I am the owner of Olga Kofton LLC. And also I am um, creator of the program Brand Hero, uh, which is the program where I help coaches and speakers to transition their visual branding online to attract premium paying clients and to position themselves to be an expert online. And also I have 15 years of marketing, graphic design and web experience. And I really love to learn things. As you know, I'm always learning, growing, trying new things. And I'm, I'm excited for tomorrow because I don't know what it's going to bring, but it's definitely going to be better than today. So I'm also an international speaker and I volunteer for Alatra TV for the Project Creative Society, where we bring world together and unite everybody under one idea of creating a society where we can all be proud of. 
Wow, that, that, thanks a lot for your introduction. And I mean, maybe uh, where are you from so that our, our international audience will know uh, where are you uh, located? Yes, definitely. So I was born in Russia and when I was a teenager, I moved to the United States and now I live in Michigan and I have two kids. I have a wonderful husband. I have two cats and one dog. So the full package. <laughs> that's nice. That's nice. Yeah. And, and that's, that's why uh, when I knew that because you look really young and you uh, and, and we just catch up and your kids are really uh, big enough and that uh, your eldest girl will be seven and your boy is four. And I was like thinking back then when I first knew you, they were like two and five. And now, yeah. and now they are really, really big. So um, as for... Our topic for today, right, which is discover the super mom in you, and why? Why did we? Why did you share this? Like, why? Why do you want to talk about this topic? And what makes you think that? Uh, that you how to discover the super mom? Because we talk about like mothers are really super human or Wonder Woman, and why is that um, very important to you? Like, and why do you speak about it? Because I know that you have some. Um, events that you speak about discover the super mom in you and that's how uh, we decided on this topic so maybe you can share with us uh, how do you come out with this topic yes definitely so if you think about super powers that women has it's something that outside of this world like no man can do what women can do and still go to work and raise kids and wash dishes and cook dinner and do it all and still give love to the extent that it just you know conquers the world so that's why i like the topic that we chose today is because it is very empowering to know that we as women we have such an impact on this world and it all starts within us so all the super powers we have are within us it's love compassion kindness mutual respect understanding and we have to, it's our goal as women to bring this out into the world and share it with everybody. Because we know that the type of world we live in is the type of world we create with our own actions, with our thoughts, with our inactions. All of everything that we do on daily basis, we are either an example to others or we are an example to ourselves or we uh, we know that we have to work you know through some of the life circumstances but we always have to come up with the creative solutions in order to impact lives around us and only women can do it because we are super powerful <laughs> wow so first Olga when when you talk about all this superpower do you see how okay how much of that potential do, are you seeing now in today's world like like mothers uh, how many of them are demonstrating this superpower oh i love this question thank you so much and uh since COVID hit and since we all transitioned online i see more and more women stepping up into their own powers and they're empowering themselves and they're surrounding themselves with other women just like that so they can understand that they can do things outside of the corporate world they can do things outside of the house even though being in the house they can go you know hide in the corner or a room and start their business or they can jump on a zoom call and have a conversation with someone they would never talk with because before we had this mindset of you know, if they're not in my country, if they don't speak my language, I cannot be communicating. But now COVID has erased all the borders. It allowed us to communicate freely and really see what others are doing out there. And when we see those examples of women stepping up and really running their own businesses or promoting themselves or even coming on and talking about peace and topics that really matter, that make us human we can really see that you know this is what we're supposed to do we're supposed to be united we're supposed to use our best human potential and talents to benefit the society and even to benefit our own families yeah i i, I totally agree with that uh what you mentioned and definitely covid had really hit a lot of us um i guess to really step up um it's either either you make it or you break it so uh, that's why uh, it's also very important um, to to really search 
deeper inside and I would say a lot of even my friends who are mothers uh, they're reflecting of the job they are they're having and the time they're spending with their kids because now they're at home they're spending more time with their husband they're spending more time with their kids and I would say the kids love that because if uh, if their mother is a working mom they don't get to see the mom when they work and now they get to see the mom and uh, they get to have more home cooked food uh, be it done by the mom or they, they order back but I would say that people got more creative that people start baking stuff people start cooking when even though they don't like cooking but they start to enjoy with it they start having all this bonding but so so as you mentioned that people are discovering this so what are the various reasons that moms are not seeing all this superpower they might have this imposter syndrome thinking that oh i'm not good enough uh, i can't do this i can't do that and having a lot of data voices that's speaking to them what would what are your thoughts about it were you were you like that before you having all these little voices that you cannot do or all the while you have you have overcome this or you uh, you are very optimistic so what were your struggles like Yes. So uh, just like any other mom out there, I didn't start out this happy person I am today because it actually takes work to really recognize that we have power over our thoughts and that the thoughts that come in are not ours. Because if you think about it, why would I think like 80% of my thoughts negatively? And why would I like think like you cannot do it and you're the worst and you're the worst mom and this is not going to happen like why would i do this to myself and that's when i recognized that the power of choosing the thoughts that you accept is actually will make your life so much easier and i know it's very hard when you're i remember when i was a mother and i just just gave birth and i was self-eating myself with those negative thoughts of oh poor me i don't have any support i have this newborn child i cannot go take a shower i cannot like just basic things but then once you recognize like it's all in my head it doesn't need to be this way we can really be what we want to be if we just imagine and give ourselves freedom to really choose positive to really choose good thoughts to really understand that it's not you that is bad because of those thoughts we all get those thoughts like every single mother no matter if you're in singapore china united states russia the thoughts are exactly the same yeah. it's a program so if you can recognize it's a program and it's not a program to help us then we can also understand but what can help us like it can really be you know so beneficial to understand that you as a woman you have the power to choose your thoughts and not just to choose your thoughts but also take take actions that will lead you in a direction where you want to go you do not have to stay behind and feel sorry for yourself or look for someone else to tell you that you know you need to get up and do things you have everything you need in your own body if it's your own parts and pieces to make the difference. And I think that's what made a difference for me is really recognizing that I am empowered. I am the woman that can make things happen. I am the one that is making excuses. So I am the one who needs to stop making those excuses. I am the one that needs to use my time and attention wisely. I am the one, no one else is going to do it for me. And I think, Kenneth, that's what we have going on in the society. We are so used to for someone else coming in and fixing something for us that we sit on the sidelines and never take action. And that's why we then complain about it. But we forget that we are 8 billion people that make this world up. And if each of us step in the right direction, then we'll be living in a totally different world. And those negative thoughts will not be attacking us as much because it will not be part of our huma humanity or part of our informational field, if that makes sense. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> it, it makes total sense. And I, I, uh, I'm on... I'm with you on this because uh, you talk about something that is very important. It's about taking charge, uh, having the permission. You, you have to give yourself permission that, 
that you can do this. Uh, you are more than this. So a lot of, the, of time you also touch on this part. We have the power to choose. A lot of time I hear a lot of mothers will say, oh, I have no choice. And when you say you have no choice, you are, you are already making that choice to choose that is not the choice. You, you yeah. get what I'm trying to say? So yeah. that is also a, a decision that you choose not to have a choice. It's a decision. So a lot of times um, we overthink things and a lot of our thoughts are being dictated by other people like our parents, our bosses, our subordinate, our friends, our relatives. And the worst, worst part is the society. The society tell us that, hey, Kenneth, you're, as a man, you need to do this. As a woman, you need to do this. As a mom, you need to do this. So a lot of time we are very, very driven by other people's expectation on us. And what you mm -hmm. mentioned is we now have to take back the power. Like COVID, the pandemic had allowed us to have come to this awareness that we have total control of our lives. Uh, that we have lost it because uh, we were so busy in the past commuting to work with that one hour two and four or maybe two hour two and four and we we have no time for ourselves and and covid basically slow us down we had a reflection of that one hours that was used to be for commuting and what you mentioned is you see the you, you see the brighter side of things and you are in control so my my question for you will be what makes you believe have that belief that you have that power because a lot of time uh, what i'm hearing is oh i can't do this i can't do that where do you get that belief from is it from someone or you have a role model that you look upon to or you have a mentor or, or anyone that you can share with us so that some of the mothers who are seeking like i do not know about myself i don't have this awareness how do i find it or how do i be like you how do you find yeah. it so for me i have never read books and then one day my friend came came comes over and she said hey olga read this book and i'm like i am not reading a book i haven't read a book i am not like no no i'm not reading this book and she's like okay fine you don't want to read this book but this book is really good and it can help you i'm like no 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 like no i'm not reading the book and then somehow um i started volunteering for a lot of tv and i recognized that a lot of people that have started to volunteer they have read the book a lot and it has inspired them to take action so after being around people that are happy and positive and driven I said to myself, you know what, maybe I should read this, but maybe I should pick it up and just, you know, put these excuses aside and see what do they know that I don't know that can change my life because we all look for that answer. We all look for the meaning of life. We all look for to find out what's the primordial knowledge of this world. We all look at things in, you know, physics, science, history. We all want to put it together where it makes sense. And you know, it's the real information. It's not being manipulated for someone's benefit. And you want to know that the type of information you receive, you can apply to yourself and you can become a better person. And I was reading this book and this book is like an encyclopedia of life. And I didn't know that till I was reading it. But I really recognized the, I guess the two takeaway points would be that we are dual in nature. So we have this animal side to us. And when I say animal side, it's like our negative side that always pulls us down. But we also have this positive or spiritual side in us. And that's where your love, compassion, understanding, action, like your drive, your drive does not live in your body. Like you cannot cut out love. You cannot, you know, do an operation and say, remove this and add more of this. It's something that's on the inside of you that's the soul that lights you up from the inside and really makes you act so learning about the duality of a human being really helped me understand myself and really helped me understand that a i am in control b i have a choice to make in everything i do i have a choice to make and then the second part that really inspired me as other people in that book is because on the last 80 pages of the book, 
it actually talks about building a creative society. Now, it doesn't use the term creative society. It uses like a thriving society or some kind of peaceful society. But what it says is it says that we cannot continue living in this consumeristic society because it creates all the problems we have. So unless we fix the root cause of consumerism as a structure of our society, we cannot achieve our highest human potential because we always will be fixing things locally or we'll be fixing things you know, here and there, putting band-aids on things. But at the end of the day, you always be, will be rolling back to the problem because the conditions that created the problem are still there. So what inspired me to act towards creative society and be a creative society in my own self is knowing that we have to do that. No one is going to do it for us. You talked about taking personal responsibility and people realizing this now, like, a president of my country is not going to go and wash my hands with the soap so I don't get germs <laughs> on it. I have to do it. It's the same for everything in our life. No one is going to come in and do it for you. There's people that can surround you and motivate you. There's people that can uplift you. There's people that can push you a little bit harder than you would push yourself. But really, it comes down to this personal responsibility in every aspect of life. It can be with your kids, it can be with your husband, it can be with your friends, with your career, business, family, and a society as a whole. So that's what really um, helped me is reading the book Alatra and really understanding those two things very well. Wow, I was about to ask you what is the book title, so it's Alatra. Yes, it's a Latra book, and that's how the Alatra International P Public Movement has started because that book inspired enough people mm. where they were ready to take action. Yeah, and that is also that speaks for the power of the book. Like you mentioned, uh, because of that book, you, you realize that something is missing, and everybody is following this, everybody is doing this. What am I, uh, uh, what am I missing out? and what makes them so driven, so motivated. And you talk about this thing, which I realized that it's also very important, the curiosity, the curiosity for information. Why are things like that? And what are the information that is coming to us? And you talk about uh, consumerism, uh, which is very important. Maybe you can give the audience a, a, a short uh, definition of what is co consumerism as a whole and what how is it affecting us? Because that is also um, kind of blocking us from discovering our true self, our real self, and also uh, how we can make the world a better place. Because cons consumerism uh, is is affecting all of us all around the world and maybe you can do uh, maybe uh, just share with us what is consumerism yeah. all about so i don't know the official de uh, definition but i'll share what it, it um, looks like right now so the type of society we live in right now is unfortunately based on the profits uh, profit-driven society which is it's okay to make a profit it's okay to make money it's okay to have the resource of money to use for yourself for things that you know that you need that daily basis it's totally okay but when we talk about consumerism we're talking about how some people have running water while others are eating rocks and you know and whatever else they can find they don't have the resources and it's not that we don't have enough water it is not it it is because someone is somewhere is not benefiting from providing water to the yeah. region or someone somewhere is not uh, making enough money or someone somewhere it's too inconvenient to provide water so consumeristic society looks like inequality it looks like war killing each other for no reason thinking that there is some type of reason. Also, consumeristic society is separating us all because all of a sudden we think of each other as enemies. But as I know, I talk to people around the globe and I probably took maybe 200 interviews myself with uh, other volunteers of Alatra TV. And when we talk to people around the globe, everybody wants to live in peace, happiness, harmony, yeah. love, compassion, understanding 
everybody wants to live in this ideal world. But what is the gap here? Like, why do we want one thing, but we live in this consumer society that is eating us alive, that is not providing us opportunities, that's taking away, you know, from our children, that is focusing on something that's so not important. And then we all of a sudden, we're not being human anymore we are being those animals and we're talking about the dual dual nature of human yeah. being of being like a little angel on one shoulder and a little devil on another well the consumeristic society is only allowing us to be on the devil's side as to say or whatever the word to use because that's how we can stay in a fear mode. That's how we can stay in a mode where we just comply and don't think for ourselves. When in a creative society, everyone has a chance to be human being. Everyone has a chance to really become what they want to be. They don't have to worry about food on the table. They don't have to worry about medical care for themselves, their kids or their parents. They don't have to worry about anything because in a creative society, it's a society that's built around the globe. There is no borders. Everybody knows each other. Everyone is a friend. No one is after someone else's wallet or no one even thinks of thing as like, hey, is uh, you know this gonna make me a profit? Everybody thinks of, is this going to benefit the society and at the end of the day benefit myself and my family and everybody around me? So the consumerism is really this concept of consuming people, consuming mm. ideas, consuming everything and not leaving enough room for us to reach our highest potential. Like we don't even know how to build pyramids, like really, like we, we got some places to go and things to discover but because we're not allowed to, because someone's not making a profit somewhere down the line, we can't. So that's why it's so important for every single person to know about the Project Creative Society, to understand the benefits of living in a creative society and to make that decision for themselves if that's what they want to live in in the next you know, five to 10 years. But yeah. it's all on us. Yeah, and you mentioned something is, um that once you know and you are aware of this consumerism um, that is around the world, you discover the other side. That means uh, what, I, what I would call like, you saw the dark side and now that, that's on the bright side. So uh, ev like when I knew um, that you are a part of Creative Society and uh, you, uh, you guys start sharing on that and you are very passionate about it, uh, I'm, I'm really, uh, in it and and really want to push that um, because I also believe that the world can be at peace uh, with harmony we can treat everyone uh, with empathy with compassion uh, just that we had to realize that the world is made up of these two sides and once you know that a lot of time we are being you can say manipulated or you can say that we are being wired in the way that we are helping someone to um, to achieve and to let them benefit. Once you are aware of that, you will stop doing that. For example, like you mentioned, uh, selling something for a profit or making money out of it or maybe uh, taking something on uh, and make it, or, uh, make it of their benefit but uh, of a disadvantage for other people. So making use of other people. Instead, we should all come together as one family. Uh, like for you and you and me, um, we are at different parts of the world, but we are connected because uh, we believe in that. Um, there's no borders, like you mentioned. Uh, ever since the pandemic, the COVID, um, internet has just created that borderless world for us. And it's going to be um, a new, new world. It's going to be a new norm. We are already living in the new norm. Like now what we are doing uh, over through internet, um, through Zoom, and now on Facebook live stream, uh, everything is possible. So uh, this is a society that I really want to do it because when when some other people, they tell you this and that, and you take it bluntly, you take it naively, naively mm -hmm. and that's where the, the thoughts and the reflections does not come. 
but because of pandemic, uh, people had more time to reflect. People had more time to really look deeper into themselves and what they want to achieve in life. Like like what happened to you uh, after reading the book, you realize that there's more meaning to life, and this is something that you want to chase for. So thanks a lot, uh, Olga, for sharing on that. And um, what was that? Uh, I think you briefly shared what was your aha moment. Um, that you decided to walk this path and do what you're doing now. So other than the book, is there any other things, other moment, uh, turning point for you, uh, why you're doing what you're doing? Yeah, so for me, I had like a lot of aha moments in my life, really. Like every single day, like if I meet someone or if I tune into some type of information that I didn't know before and discover something, it's always like an aha moment. And you're like, oh, why why didn't I know about it? Like why, why they didn't teach me this in school or, you know, all of that. But really, my biggest aha moment is taking action. When I decided for myself that it is time not just to read the book, know about the knowledge, observe others taking actions, when I recognize that the only way I can improve myself is to take action, that's it. Because once you take that action and you create this cycle that you can even get out of, it becomes part of you. And now I have friends all over the globe. They speak 180 different languages. We all get on Zoom and we talk like best friends. And we might not know who works where, who does what, but what really unites us is this creative society, a society that we all can build together and we can unite over. Because if you think about in a consumer society, you always unite over, um, you know, a a refrigerator, a wallet, (laughs) and unite over an idea or a concept or something like that. But then it's also like, you always look in in a consumer society, it's always groups of people. So it's never like, hey, come join our nonprofit. Hey, our company is better. Hey, our group is better. Like it's always still separating yeah. us. But creative society concept, it's something deep down inside each person. We already have it inside of us. We just got to allow ourselves to take action and spread this information and to learn about it. Not just to say it's not possible, like it's never going to happen. Well, we build the society we live in today. So why can't we build a society yeah. we You're want right. to live in who, who started this human, human society? We. Back yeah. then, our ancestors and all that. So yeah. it's always possible that we could build, uh, like what you guys it's always mentioned. Always possible, and you know, it makes you also question because as I was learning history throughout even school, it always was wars, conflicts. It, it was never like, and there was a peaceful civilization but then when i grew up and i uh, started to read the books and i I started to be more interested in in the history i actually saw that the history goes back even further and that's where we see those thriving communities and that's where we see people living as one peaceful society but somehow somewhere in the consumer society that information is not beneficial to us so that's why we have to very be open-minded to everything that's being given to us and don't take everything as is but really dive deep and do research and feel for yourself what is the truth and what is leading you the wrong way yeah i i like that when you say that um we are always caught up with the consumer society that um that in fact, naturally, we are all in a cre- creative society. Just that mm-hmm. because someone created or someone with power, they created this consumer society to to create a benefit for themselves. Mm-hmm. And, and people just fall into that. And this is something that uh, it takes some time. And, and some, uh, I would say, for me personally, it's really true. The, the hard knocks the depression and that made me realize that wow the world is like that this is how the world is made up of and i i told myself i'm not going to to be in this consumer society like you mentioned and not being driven and not being okay they say okay you need to have this you need to have all these five c like the car the cash the, the credit card and all that stuff this is what you meant by the consumer society that they want you to have all this in fact even now, I do not have all this. 
but does it make me less happy? No. Yeah. In fact, it's the reverse. So when we have been through uh, some tough and low and uh, even the pandemic, I think the awareness of the creative society or what is the world is going to be like for me, I always believe that we should all be 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 called um, human beings or mm-hmm. we call planetiers or, or earthling, <laughs> whatever you can call it. So that it groups every one of us like like you are not. You're not from US, you're not American, I'm not Singaporean, I'm not... Everybody, are, we are just human beings. We all should all come together as one big family rather than um, having all these labels, having all these names and having all this, uh, I would say, differentiation. Uh, we mm-hmm. should all come together because now internationally we all speak the same language, English, a common language. Even people uh, in China, they are also speaking English and we have people... And even though that you may not speak the same language, um, I believe that we human beings, we have a way. Because that's how our ancestors started. Like even for my grandparents, they, they came all the way from China to Singapore. And all of them speak different dialect, different form of uh, Chinese dialect. And they still have this, what we call the Kampong spirit, which is uh, what creative society is all about. Like regardless of race, religion, language, gender everybody's coming together um to eat together to play together to wash out each other's houses together Mm -hmm. and this is something that we are missing uh and ever since the industrial revolution uh, all these things have been missing and now it's time to find it back and i'm 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 so grateful that uh creative society is doing that part and and how much that you guys have been doing and i i like the part where you talk about your aha moment is taking action and, yeah. and why I say that, uh, and I saw it because two years ago when I first met you, uh, you, you guys were just starting off with oh, your yeah. Electra TV, <laughs> Creative Society. And, and now to date, you have done more, more episodes, interview more people, like 200. I've done only like 80 over plus, now 83 with you. So I would say that you, 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 have, you have grown so much. You have uh, transformed, I would say transformed totally from... Um, from the Olga that I first known. So uh, this is where I feel that you you are the super mom now. You, <laughs> you have the superpower, like the superpower I've unleashed only by doing it. So talking about uh, the superpower and all that, what would be your, what are the common challenges of like mom wanting to change the world? What would be the challenges and struggles for mom wanting to change the world? Yeah, so the, the current challenge in the consumeristic society, of course, is managing time and doing it all. So if you think about it, mothers always have dishes to do, laundry to fold, shopping. You know, there's so many things that we do and we don't even think that they are, you know, like something we cannot do, right? They're, they're a must, like you're born as, as, a, as a woman, this is what you do, because that's the box you were born into. But in reality, like this time management, we all can figure out how to use our time for the best. How do we still spend time with our kids and husbands and significant others and family, but still do not lose yourself in it. It's very important to be your individual because this way you are not relating yourself to just kids or you're not relating yourself to just husband. You also can step out and be yourself, have your own interests, have your own hobbies, have your own time to read or to do an interview or volunteer or whatever you wanna do. So it's really important to time manage. And I understand that right now we all have this you know, device in our hand called cell phone and we like to spend time on it but it's really is about time management and isn't that really important to you know be on the phone for hours but don't have enough time to play with your kids outside is it that really important to be on the phone for hours but instead volunteer your time and make this world a better place and we are right now coming up to huge climatic cataclysms that are happening around the globe. And we always think it's never going to happen to me. It's always think it's that country, it's this country, it's because of the, this location and that location. But right now we quickly re- realizing that 
without this unification around the globe, we cannot stand against the weather forces that are coming our way. We cannot stand against a hurricane. We cannot stand against a tsunami. We cannot stand against the flood. Like all of this needs to be solved before it reaches people. So we have to prognose and know what's coming so we can let people know to move out of the area. Or we have to build houses that don't break down in an earthquake. We have to do it all, but we can only do it if we put human life as number one priority. Yeah. And then everything will change like 180 degrees. Yeah, and, and when you talk about humans, life is, is where the humi humility comes in. Because mm -hmm. uh, this is something I see that's lacking, uh, especially very much in the consumer society. The human humanity is not there, and the empathy is not there. That's why, uh, for me personally, I, I believe that women are the change maker of the new economy. It's because a uh, woman has that na na um, natural instinct, mm -hmm. that, that natural talent, like you mentioned, the superpower, having that love, compassion, empathy, uh, that is really... Uh, making the world a better place uh, and this is what I'm, I'm seeing that we are lacking and uh, I'm glad that we had this conversation and you talk about um, something that I, I suddenly had this aha moment I would say that you own your own <laughs> life you ha own your own life every yeah. one of us own our own life so uh, is whether you are mom your kids is not everything your husband is not everything you are everything because uh, if Imagine, I always use this analogy that a mom is, is the captain of the ship. If the captain is down, the whole ship will sink, meaning that your husband, your, your parents-in-law, your parents, your kids, your, even your dog, even your cats, is all sinking with you. But when you, you as a captain of the ship, you are strong, you know where you're going, you are taking care of yourself, uh, be it your health, be it your beauty, be it whatever that makes you happy, your emotional uh, side of yours, uh, of yourself. Mm -hmm. you, once you're being well taken care of, the rest of the people, your crew or your loved ones will be safe and all of you will be going to a, to a destination that is, uh, there's happiness, there's joy, there's abundance, whatever that you want to wish for, it will happen. Just that a lot of time we are being blinded by all the consumerism. Uh, that we've yeah. forgotten about all these important things uh, and I'm glad that you put out a, uh, you share with us about the, the fear that people are in and that's mm -hmm. where you have to own your own life uh, to really come out from it so other than the, the challenges uh, for people to make the change so what would be your biggest challenge as a mompreneur like you mentioned about time management so mm -hmm. um, is time management one of your biggest challenge or you have another biggest challenge as a mompreneur so time management and also like maybe like child care because sometimes uh you know some like school all of a sudden is going to tell you like tomorrow is a day off or something like that and you already had your calls with clients scheduled so it's about not about being flexible it is about understanding that it is okay if things change so the biggest challenge is really like knowing that we don't know anything and we don't know what tomorrow brings because all of a sudden like this year i had lost power five times and i didn't know i'm gonna lose power and i had things I planned and I had, you know, things to do, but I had to adjust and be flexible. And I think that's another challenge is that instead of being flexible, we are driving ourselves insane by mm. thinking we have control over anything. We do not have control over anything but ourselves. Yeah. And that's all we can do. The way we react to situations, the way we position ourselves where everything is okay no one has died there is no blood there is no bone sticking out whatever the case is everything is okay everything is solvable there is not anything that you know really gonna set us back but what we choose to do and how we choose to act yeah i, I like the part that you mentioned that it is okay that things don't go according to plan and we don't have to hold ourselves accountable for it at times, uh, I see we beat ourselves up for no reason. We just uh, feel guilty and we use that guilt to keep hitting on us. 
punishing ourselves and these are things that you don't need to you do you don't need any of this you don't need to beat yourself out you don't have to feel guilty uh, like you mentioned flexibility during this period of time a lot of plans will not go according like last year i had all my plans to go malaysia to do my speaking gig i have all the plans working with uh like co-working spaces i'm so excited that i can uh, uh empower the mothers in malaysia but all my plans was wiped out just instantly but as human being being creative um we have to find a way to pivot uh that's where i pivot online and all, a, a lot of stuff so what you mentioned like being flexible uh we just have to learn to embrace changes and be flexible uh and don't be too uh, i would say fixated on our plan and believe that our plan will go according because uh we are not we are not the person up there the universe uh we do not know what's going to happen we do not know whether is there going to be a tsunami that's coming is there going to be a typhoon that is coming but what we know is like what you mentioned is um we cannot control the things around us but we can co- control ourselves we can control our emotion we can control our action we can also uh, control the people around us within our means and that that is important because um if you be too hard on yourself uh it's also being hard on other people your loved ones that's around so uh that there's more misery than than happiness in that so uh t- talking about the challenges so what would you advice uh, mothers that if they want to start a business what would be your advice for a mom who want to start a business so if you want to start a business it's really important to do your research and figure out what you are good at something that you will do and you love dearly something that probably involves helping people because that's what businesses are for there to help people uh, do something they thought was not possible or to solve a problem or to make something work faster uh, so just do your research and really before you even like put your name out there go on to the free webinars go on to like attend seminars even the one you put together candace it's awesome and just get inspired just get the spark inside of you to know you can sustain it surround yourself with other women that are doing the same that are willing to share their journey with you and to lift you up and to help you out to really research and see if this is the field you want to be in and also make sure you don't forget that you have kids and you have husband and a dog and the two cats <laughs> how do you gonna how are you going to manage the time and how are you going to work are you going to just plan on working at night when everybody is asleep are you going to have some help coming your way your mother-in-law is going to come in for one day to watch the kids whatever that is just plan it out see what's out there and really position yourself as an expert because you don't want to offer everything under the sun you really want to have only one offer that you do so good that solves the biggest problem for your ideal client and that's how your business will remain sustainable yeah i i i i i can say that uh what you have pointed out is also something that i always share with the mothers who wanted to start business is to solve a problem solve a problem that you can within your means or within your expertise and doing something that you are familiar with you are good at you have to be at least good at you cannot say oh kind of i love baking but have you baked before it, like no one is going to pay someone who's just starting to bake right so you have to be good at it you have to be really good at it so rather than going into a arena that is totally or industry that's totally different from what you have uh, expertise on experience mm-hmm. on uh it's it's good to start with something that you're familiar with you start making that money you start making that your first part of goal before you mm-hmm. venture into your passion because passion and purpose can only bring you so far the last the, the last thing is still profiting still making that profit that's why I, I even even in my workshop even in my summit even in my book mother industrialist i talk about passion purpose and profit 
once you have this three P comes together, you have this blueprint for your entrepreneurship journey. And I really thank um, Ogaf uh, for sharing so much uh, golden nuggets, so much gems. Uh, time really flies. Really love what you have shared. Uh, it's a great catch up with you after a Thank while. You. I, I, I would say it's been a year, but I'm really blessed to have you making time for this show. So maybe you can share with the audience that if they want to get connected with you, how can they get connected with you, Olga? Yeah, so the best way is on LinkedIn and you can just type in my name, Olga Kofton, and you will see my profile. And also to learn more about the Project Creative Society and its importance to the world, visit alatraunites.com or you can just Google a Creative Society or Google Alatra TV and we all come up and you'll see the amazing efforts people around the globe are doing to make our society a better place. Thank you. Thank you, Olga, so much uh, for that. So now it's your turn for you to post the question of the day out to the audience and also to the next guest. So are you ready with your question of the day? Yes, I am. Okay. Share with All me. right. So how important it is to allow kids to be kids? Wow. That's a very good question. So um, could you repeat again? Yes. How, uh, how important it is to allow kids just to be kids. How important it is to allow kids to be kids, is it? Mm-hmm. Okay, so let me repeat again. So the question of the day posted by Olga is, how important it is to allow kids to be kids? Wow, I, I like that because um, <laughs> the, I, I would say today I've just, um, I think posted something onto my Facebook. Uh, a, a, along that because a lot of time uh, we parents we want to uh, we place a lot of expectation on our children yeah. want them to be this want them to be that but are they being kids themselves and I like this this question a lot so the question of the day posted by Olga is how important it is to allow kids to be kids and this question goes out to the next guest and also to the audience if for those who are listening and tuning in uh, do let us know in the comments in the chat what will be your answer to Olga's question and I'm so looking forward for the next guest that's going to answer this question uh, question of the day posted by Olga. So uh, last but not least, uh, Olga, what would be your last advice for the mothers who are uh, sitting on the fence thinking whether they should start entrepreneurship or not? So uh, what would be your last advice for them, Olga? I think my last advice for anyone who is thinking of do I start this internship journey or not is really to put yourself in a position where you are going to be happy. So if you are taking something on and you know you're just going to be miserable, you're just going to run around, you're just not going to know where to start, you know it's going to bring more stress into your life, then don't do it if you don't have to. But really, like, do something that is, like you said, it's a passion, but also brings an income so you can, you know, equal out this passion with income because at the end of the day, your husband or, you know, significant <laughs> other will still ask, hey, those bills, they need yeah. to get paid. You started the business and the business is supposed to make money. So start with something that is going to make you happy and then the, you can transition that into the income as well. Wow, thank you so much, Olga. I like the part where business is supposed to make an, a profit, supposed to make money. And if it's not making money, then it's a charity, it's a non-profit organization or it's a social enterprise. So thanks a lot, Olga, for sharing so much golden nuggets and all the gems that you have been putting out to us. And I believe that the audience and uh, listeners are uh, enjoying themselves, having uh, learning so much, how they can discover the super mom in them. So thanks a lot, Olga. Um, Last but not Thank least, you, I'm Ken yeah, you're welcome, Olga. So I'm Kenneth here, signing off with Olga. Thank you guys for watching and listening to Mompreneur Space Live Show Podcast. And uh, I shall see you guys in the next episode. Thank you guys, everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks, Olga. Bye. Thank you. Bye.